the whole thing about being much more conscious about not touching or shaking hands is requiring us to take a moment and pause and stop and think before we just do something that's habitual. Um, obviously, there's there's always scammers, fraudsters about that try to take advantage of these difficult circumstances. So please be careful. There is apparently um, uh, uh, there are different helplines like one eight six six number nine and then spell out no scam um, where you can report scams and price gouging and things like that. So that's interesting. Um, but then there's also the government response, you know, how much they're offering in terms of free interest loans on a short term basis for small businesses to survive buying out or providing support for airline industry, cruise industry, hotel industry. A lot of these major industries, banking even maybe, um, that will be affected longer term by the fact that everything's shut down. Um, I think what's interesting to me is how fast the fast track of developing medicines, developing vaccines, developing triage situations in medical institutions to care for um, the rush of coronavirus uh, patients while still handling everyone else is kind of interesting. So we can do it when we have to, um, but I think one of the things the states has to, to come to the conclusion of is that we are a lot slower than some other countries, even though we think we're so great. And I'm gonna address that in a moment. What I do like also is that there's a lot more concern for our seniors and people who are at risk um, and along with that comes more intergenerational communication, particularly online with grandparents, for example, reading stories to their grandkids through the Internet um, to keep them busy uh, while the parents are working and and just keeping in touch because you care. And um, and so you make a much more conscious effort to stay in contact, to stay in touch over the Internet or over the telephone. Um, so that's kind of interesting. I will. I wonder how all of that will will flesh out in the long run. And then of course, the celebrities are popping up, um, both encouraging youth talent, they're getting seen, these youth are getting seen by people like Lin-Manuel Miranda and other stars that otherwise would never, they'd never get a look-see from. Um, celebrities holding concerts online and um, acting as role models when they found out they've had the virus and so on. So there's a lot of different dynamics that are emerging and could lead to some really cool longer term cultural shifts. Um, in fact, in speaking of shifts and so on, I have some information from Peter Diamandis, who's a um, very, uh, a guy who's very much into um, forward thinking. Um, and he's written a piece about learning from China, seven high tech strategies for pandemic containment. And one of the first he talks about is how much the Chinese are using drones. So drones, all across various parts of China are sharing information on loudspeakers. They're carrying signs with QR codes for no contact registration purposes. They're spraying disinfectants in schools and hospitals and other public buildings. They're delivering packages and taking people's temperatures. This is drones. So, you know, obviously these things already had to exist in some capacity before the last couple of months when the whole you know, province and larger parts of China were shut down. So all of a sudden, all of these amazing um, abilities and services are are being put to use. Um, and uh, everything to transport um, medical supplies and, and dealing with no contact situations with between people. And along with that would be the release of robots who are being used for touch-free delivery of everything from coffee to fresh vegetables to medicines and so on. So medical staff can place items on robot trays, so to speak. Robots go to the patient's doors, patients receive items contact-free, then they return to the nurse's station where they're disinfected and continue delivery. They're even talking about driverless cars in China where they are delivering 24 deliveries every 30 minutes, greatly reducing the burden of frontline delivery staff. 
And again, prompted by the outbreak, zero contact distribution, self-driving freight, robo-taxis, and other forms of autonomous navigation are now exploding business opportunities. Who knew, right? <laughs> Well, then there's the whole biotech field. Now, um, one medical company has already released a new food line of medicinal noodles. Of course, the Chinese eat a lot of noodles. And these bring along immune-boosting ingredients in an attempt to stem vulnerability to infection. Um, and they also found out that car makers and iPhone manufacturers are churning out face masks faster than face mask manufacturers themselves. So that's a pretty interesting situation. So online consultations in terms of uh, medical consultations with uh, medical staff have gone from pretty much non-existent to the new norm. Um, that's pretty cool. And even uh, Alibaba's Future Driven Research Institute can now test coronavirus infection with um, artificial intelligence analytics at a reported 96% accuracy simply by looking at a CAT scan. And they can uh, alleviate pressures on hospitals by completing this recognition process in 20 seconds rather than the five to 15 minutes it takes a doctor to do the same. Other Chinese inventions or um, um, very forward-thinking things that are happening in the in the states and around the world as well. But Chinese are a little step ahead of us in many cases. Are the virtual classrooms where the kids are kept at home and sharing both free online classes, but also they're doing online merge offline environments, which is where ed tech business, which is um, a commercial enterprise, and on and offline. Um, professional training and educational programs are, are flourishing. So that is a space to watch for sure. And of course, closely related to that is remote working with uh, people get, have a chance to try a new way of living and working from home. Obviously chat groups, teleconferencing and so on, which is already happening to a large degree is just happening on a much larger scale. And it'll be really interesting to see how much that adds to um, the diminishment of the need for actual physical spaces for work. Now, especially when you go into um, unmanned retail, which is like, a, was it Google or Amazon that just started that new supermarket where you don't have to, you don't have a checkout person, you just scan your items and buy and leave. And then finally, making cities virus resistant. resistant. So they're showing in China an extraordinary example of mutual accountability between the government and the populace. And they're using uh, lots of innovative processes to make cities virus resistant. Now, in some ways, that's a bit tricky because viruses just pop up and we don't know how they work all together. You know, Americans have this idea that we are culturally superior, perhaps like Japan uh, thought in 1835 when Commodore Perry showed up on their shores with big uh, military ships and sort of shattered the illusion that the rest of the world um, shared their samurai honor culture. So not only us here in the United States are being humbled by this coronavirus situation, but people all around the world. And from my point of view, um, just a couple of uh, observations. This is way more than simply a health threat or even just a recession. It's really total systemic collapse. And um, it could happen any time. It could have happened at any time. Could still happen at any time. We have gotten used to and, um, our comfortable behavior of our modern style of living. There is a term, a philosophy called via negativa, which is what can we do without? Is there anything we can do um, with less of? Um, and instead, focus on what we love doing and enjoy the simple things. Now, there is a philosophy also uh, that talks about winning, win, where win stands for what's important now. So for me, this coronavirus outbreak is a huge wake up call. Uh, requiring, in order for our planetary survival, um, effort, devotion, sacrifice, love even, empathy, compassion, even defining 
or redefining a new reality. We kind of forget that we are living on this ball of ice and rock flying through space. Um, and so the way that we can um, overcome feelings of possible loneliness or boredom, and by the way, don't confuse one for the other. Sometimes what feels like being lonely is simply boredom, is to return to a deep sense of personal presence. This is how you will regain a sense of control in a universe at the moment that is out of control. A deep sense of presence and peace and calm, whether it takes you through a walk in the garden, if you're able to go out, if you, you know, whether through me meditation, um, whether through um, just sitting still and being grateful for your life, your health, the people around you, the community we have, the freedom we have in this crazy world we live in. And most of all, to uh, default to the highest level of what it means to be a human in the modern age. So let's all go out and win. Remember what's important now and find that sense of peace that passes understanding and recognize that this too shall pass. So let's make the most of it. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in, listening today. And uh, love you to check out the archives on the SOB radio network. And do remember that the life you live is the legacy you leave. Bye-bye now.